Hello friends, welcome to Mechanical Engineering Online Classes. Let us look at this problem. Here the question is to locate the centroid of the circular wire segment that is shown. So x, y axis are given, the circular arc is in the first quadrant. The black strip what we are seeing is the wire to, for which we have to find the centroid. According to the procedure that we have discussed previously, the first thing that we have to look at is if at all there is an xy axis given, we have to consider that xy axis only. If it is not given then we can consider something else. Even in case xy axis are not mentioned, this is the best way that we can choose that we have already discussed. The immediate next step is to identify a differential element. So the differential element step 1 is done, step 2 is differential element. So here the differential element will be a one dimensional element only or otherwise the given object is also a wire, wire is a 1D element. So because it is a one dimensional element the differential element will be the differential length DL. So let us assume some differential element uh, element here. So I am assuming this pink zone as our differential element DL whose length is DL. Length is DL is arc length. So let us assume that the radius of this circular wire, the circular arc is R. So we can write DL in terms of R. So let us assume that our DL is subtending an angle of d theta from its center O. So DL length of R can be given as radius into the angle subtended which is R theta. So this DL is R d theta. Let us also assume that this angle from x axis to d theta is some theta. So now the third step is to find the length and moment arm. Length means DL. We have to find DL and also the moment arm. Moment arms are the centroidal locations of the x tilde and y tilde of the differential element. So the length of element is DL which is nothing but R d theta. Now we have to find the moment arm. The moment arm of element is nothing but x tilde and y tilde which is nothing but the centroid of the differential element because if you remember the formula to find centroid of a one dimensional element x bar is nothing but x tilde dl divided by integral dl. Similarly y bar centroid of the entire 1D one, one element will be given as y tilde dl by integral dl. So this x tilde and y tilde are the moment arms of the differential element. This y tilde is the y coordinate of centroid of dl element. Similarly x tilde is nothing but the x centroid or x coordinate of the centroid of the differential element dl. So this is how we will be finding ultimately by finding dl x tilde y tilde we will be finding x bar and y bar which is the centroid of the complete one dimensional element that is given. So now as we have already found what dl is, dl is nothing but r d theta. Let us also now find the x tilde and y tilde that is the centroid of the differential element. Centroid of differential element somewhere here. The black dot that we are seeing on the pink element. So the polar coordinates of uh, this can be given as r comma theta because it is a radius r from the origin and uh, from x axis the element is at angle theta. So polar coordinates are r theta. But we want it in terms of x and y because we want to find the x bar and y bar of the entire element. So 
because O2 this centroid of the element is at r distance this y tilde which is the y coordinate y centroidal coordinate of the differential element is r sin theta and similarly the x uh, coordinate of the centroid of dl is x tilde which can be given as r cos theta so therefore now we know the momentum of the element that is x tilde is nothing but r cos theta and y tilde is nothing but r sin theta now we can straight away apply the formula and find x bar and y bar of the given entity so we know the formula of x bar which is for a 1d element which is integral x tilde in, uh, dl in divided by integral dl so this can be now written as we know x tilde x tilde is r cos theta let us substitute it and dl is r d theta this is divided by integral dl which is nothing but r d theta now because uh, the given figure is having a subtended angle of 90 degrees 0 to pi by 2 because this is 90 degrees so the differential element has now a uh, differential variable is now in terms of theta so this will be from 0 to pi by 2 here also it will be from 0 to pi by 2 r is a constant so that can be brought out it is r square integral 0 to pi by 2 cos theta d theta this is divided by r integral 0 to pi by 2 d theta so i can cancel out one r and we will be remaining with r integral cos theta d theta is nothing but integral cos theta d theta is nothing but sin theta so this is sin theta theta varying from 0 to 90 this is divided by integral d theta is theta itself so theta also varies from 0 to pi by 2 so therefore we can write this as r into sin pi by 2 minus sin 0 divided by pi by 2 minus 0 whenever you are using your scientific calculator for this pi by 2 or the angle could be anything it might be 3 pi by 5 could be anything the given question might not be always uh, quarter circle it could be anything so in that case you have to see whether your calci is calculating it in degrees or radians if it is in degrees you have to convert it to radians and vice versa whatever you are going to substitute so now coming back to our solution it will be r into sin 90 is 1 sin 0 is 0 so it is r into 1 minus 0 that is nothing but r itself mm, here we are left with pi by 2 so ultimately it becomes 2 r by pi so x bar is 2 r by pi similarly we have to find y bar y bar is given as y tilde dl whole integral divided by integral dl now this is y tilde is nothing but r sin theta and this is r d theta divided by integral r d theta theta is same so its uh, limits are also same i'm cancelling r and r we'll be left with r integral sin theta d theta nothing but minus cos theta divided by pi by 2 theta which is nothing but pi by 2 minus 0 so this can be written as minus of minus r cos 90 all right cos pi by 2 minus cos 0 divided by pi by 2 so 
cos pi by 2 is 0, cos 0 is 1. So, this is 0 minus 1 will be minus 1. Minus of minus 1 is 1. So, 1 into r is r. r divided by pi by 2. So, this has also come out to be 2 r by pi. So, if you observe, we have got our x bar and y bar as same. x bar, y bar is 2 r by pi comma 2 r by pi. So, this is a quad circle. So, somewhere 2 r by pi and 2 r by pi here. This is our centroid of the quad circle. This is where our x is equal to y is happening. So, it is an x equal to y line. Means a line that is at 45 from x axis or y axis. So, this is the axis of symmetry of the quarter circle. Axis of symmetry of a quarter circle is the axis that cuts it exactly at its mid length, mid point of length passing through its center. So, this is its axis of symmetry and the centroid is lying on that axis of symmetry only. So, this is also, this also can act as a proof that the centroid always lies on axis of symmetry provided there is an axis of symmetry. So, this is a solution to the given question. Thanks for watching. If this video was of help to you, please like it and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel.